I'm doing this video for uh, Clarence Polly, um, a friend in Florida through uh, through the um, American Sarama Association organization. And um, Clarence has asked me to uh, to see if I had any females because he's trying to um, start a A nursery uh, to breed and I suppose sell bettas. So I've had a successful betta breeding and I am trying at this point, they are now seven months old, to determine which are males and which are females so I can possibly help Clarence out. Um, I started by googling how to sex bettas um, as a question and then read everything I could on it and there are a lot of a lot of videos available now I suspect that this particular one let's see if I can get it in focus is a female and uh, the reason I say that is she has a somewhat um, shorter body than most I'm deciding are males and also has quite a good belly on her. Now, like I say, or did I say this, this is at seven months of age. Um, so they are really at a point where it's uh, difficult for me, at least, not having done this before, uh, to sex them. Uh, this one I've taken to be a male because I feel that his body is, um, it appears longer, as do the, the, the the thin rays, which are just starting to lengthen out um, in this variety, which is a uh, crown tail. Uh, my pair were crown tails. Now, I'll take you and show you, first of all, the tank that I raised them in, in which there are still, uh, I don't know, a dozen. Um, these have been... Um, gone through and these turn out to be smaller than most of the others although um, they're pretty uniform in size all of them so far but always there's a few standouts so this morning I pulled out a batch of them and I will attempt to sex those uh, basically what I'm saying is the um, Short bodies and fat bellies are females, and the longer, thinny, thinner bodies are males. Um, I have bettas everywhere now. <laughs> um, because I, I live in the north and it's been hard to keep them warm, uh, I was able to do it in the tank with a heater, but outside the tank I have to find spots um, that stay relatively warm. So here's a batch on top of my heater, which is right in my kitchen. And um, it's always just a few degrees warmer there than it is everywhere else. And it, right now it's 73.3 degrees on top of the heater. Then there's the top of the refrigerator. Um, refrigerators do the same thing. In fact, this is a little bit warmer, 73.5. So, there are a few that I feel like I've sexed already. Let's just take one. I just assume this to be a male. If he can turn sideways, we'll get to see. No, he's not going to do it. Let's try the guy next door to him. They all seem to want to face the front when you point a camera at him. There he goes. So, he seems to be just a little bit thinner than the ones that I'm deciding at this point are females. So I'll go into yet another location. This is my goldfish tank, um, which doesn't have a heater, but because of the light, it maintains more heat. And I have quite a few others also that I feel that I've sorted out in some way. Let's see, I marked this one as male.
Yeah, he's a pretty good guy. He's showing, um, again, the more extended thin growth. But still, it's early. I, I don't really know. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just doing it. Uh, let's take one marked female and see how that looks. Uh, here. I'm feeling a little bit more sure about her because of that big rounded belly. Gets hard when you feed them to distinguish between them. Um, because they all sort of swell up a bit. But that's definitely a big round belly. And I, I'm feeling pretty uh, sure about that one. Now, um, on those labels, uh, there's a picture of the male, which I no longer have. Um, and you can see that it, very much that uh, extended fin growth, the crown tail fin growth. Let me take you and see if I can get a shot of the female who bred all the rest of these. She's the mother. And I, I think she's a good specimen of what a female better in good form looks like. There she is. Definitely you can see that belly. What I want to add too, for the sake of uh, others trying to breed them, uh, our, our mutual friend Diane um, is attempting to breed, and I forgot to mention this to you, Diane. Um, one of the things that I did before breeding started last August was continually feed both breeders with um, mosquito larva, which was available to me all, all summer, and um, baby um, guppies. I have quite a few guppies, and in the culling process, like we do with chickens, um, I have to remove quite a few because they're really, they really breed. Anyway, uh, this is for you, Clarence, and for you, Diane, and for anyone else who's interested in breeding bettas. You can go on YouTube, um, search my name, Sam Trayton, and there will be, I don't know, six, seven, eight um, videos about breeding bettas in, in this particular case. It follows uh, the breeding of these very same babies, of which now I have about um, 65, and I've been giving them out, distributing them um, quite a bit. Anyway, thanks. Um, the date is March 30, 2019, and I'm Sam Trayton.